time to please Allah, a chance to gain reward, I will spend on you, he says, on all who spend in good cause. Good deeds are opportunities, sparkling bright and true, raising you in the sight of Allah, and I don't need a jannah for you. So rush to earn his reward, don't forget the oppressed, and when you go to Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to a time to please Allah. This is your host, Gibra al-Rumani. And we are live from Dubai, as always, on Thursday nights. And we are bringing you special programs, special topics, things that um, you know appeal to you, the 21st century audience, Muslims all over the world. Uh, dealing with uh, different situations uh, coming from different walks of life Alhamdulillah, it's always a time to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala If you missed any of our previous shows, you can always view them on our YouTube And just type a time to please Allah You'll get all the shows from there You can see our previous episodes Things that we've discussed in our previous shows A lot of interesting topics that for sure uh, will benefit you Also you can check our Facebook page, like it, share it, a time to please Allah. Also, you can check out my personal page, uh, facebook.com slash alromani, A-L-R-O-M-A-A-N-I. It probably appears on the screen. And uh, I share a lot of things uh, ba based on the programs, based on the uh, different activities that we are doing. And um, the last show that I was uh, hosting, which was about two weeks ago, we I was with Brother Ayad. And we were talking about the traps of shaitan. Inshallah, today, tonight, we will continue that. And Brother Ayad will be joining me in the next uh, segment of the show. But before that, uh, I wanted to raise uh, something about uh, the things that are going on in the world right now. Uh, number one, uh, to do with the um, crisis in the world, the refugee crisis. A lot of the people around the world from the Muslim countries are migrating towards European countries, not Muslim countries. And um, of course, this is not an issue here of migration or not, or this or that. That's not something I want to discuss. Uh, the issue that, I'm, that is alarming that a lot of people are uh, looking at converting to Christianity, be it for whatever reason, uh, but this is something that should be alarming for Muslims. The other thing that we see in the world also is uh, the issues, you know, the, the attacks that are taking place and so on. And this is something that is, of course, Muslim communities around the world in non-Muslim countries in the West and so on, are, are, there's a lot of pressure on them. And there's a lot of pressure on them. And they feel like they have to somehow do extra work now to fit in or to appease the non-Muslims to say, that, hey, we're not, you know, uh, a threat to you or anything like that. <clears throat> and that is all fine. Uh, but... You know, there's there's a limit to that, and what's happening these days is that a lot of questions are coming in whether sisters they can take their hijabs off, for example. You know that they feel threatened, or brothers, you know, just you know not look like Muslims, uh, you know, remove any kind of things that would would uh, show them as Muslims. And of course, uh, you know, the the issue is 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 a critical issue, and people need to think about it that do you really believe that uh, you know your safety is in the hands of these people right uh, and to what extent does it go in terms of you know to what point and to what point can you actually go to the limit of disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala such as for example not covering and thinking that you know it's fine uh, to, to be all honest you know we've spoken to people in the west and so on it's not you know people always like to pump things up and and exaggerate no one's gonna you know do anything and there might be here and there isolated cases but that's the same type of isolated cases that happen from you know so-called extremists within you know you know islam right that they, they're attacked you know these people are paris or that or that it's the same amount of people do the same type of things from 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 the other side of the non-Muslims who feel threatened by the Muslims and they'll do something you know about it supposedly so I don't think that people should should necessarily worry they should be good citizens they should respect the law they should uh, you know 
be righteous. If people are, you know, we shouldn't take these these critical events and then, you know, okay, let's let's be righteous now and be overly polite and overly nice. We should be over, you know, polite and nice all the time, and we should be, as, you know, the saying goes that. The Muslim is like the rain, right? Wherever he falls, he brings benefit. If the Muslim community brings benefit wherever they are, be, be them in, you know, in the in America or Canada or UK, then you'll find that the non-Muslim community themselves will fight for the Muslim community, and it's happening. Alhamdulillah, you'll find it throughout. Uh, for example, there is a place in Canada. Uh, it's, it's quite a remote place where there's not so many Muslims. And uh, it's actually about, <coughs> I believe, north of Toronto. And what happened is, it's called Peterborough. And, you know, someone burnt the masjid, you know, out of their hatred for what happened. And you find that the, uh, the non-Muslim community opened one of their worship places for Muslims to go and pray there. So why? Because they felt that the Muslims are contributing to that city. And they said, no way are we going to leave these people without or them being in you know, some kind of a, uh, you know, a weak stay where they can't pray and so on. We're going to help them. Right? The same way, when the Muslims are socially active, they build hospitals, they contribute, they build schools, they contribute to the welfare of the society, you'll find that pe people are not going to take you know, drastic measures against you if a small, you know, number of people do something to cause this, you know, problems. People say, no, we, you know, these people are good, these people are part of our community, we'll protect them, whatever it takes. So the Muslims need to understand that. You know, we shouldn't, you know, it's like we're always reactionary, you know, oh, oh now it's about, now it's time for me to, to be good, nice, you know, to my neighbors or to, to be extra polite. No, you sh if you're always polite, as Islam teaches us, and always good, and always benefiting people, and you protect, you know, the honor of your neighbors and so on, you, you know, you're not going to have these issues. The problem is, and the reality is that uh, we as Muslims, sadly, we talk a lot, okay? We, we, we like to do a lot of shows and a lot of YouTube videos and a lot of uh, theory. But when it comes to practice, we are, I wouldn't say we're not doing anything. No, we're doing, alhamdulillah, there's a lot of, uh, you know, good work. What I'm saying is that the amount of talk versus the amount of practice, I mean, it's, it's, there's really a huge difference. And, you know, as the, the saying says, you know, talk to talk, walk to walk, it should be equally. It should be. If we talk, we should walk. Like, if we say something, we should do it. So that's why, you know, we're always defending ourselves. Because if people, with all due respect, to all the Muslims who are watching. If you would do a little bit of effort and not always rely upon Sheikh so-and-so and Fulan so-and-so and Mr. so-and-so and Mufti so-and-so and this person so-and-so, you know, you know, he's going to come and do the show or he's going to come and do this or he's going to do the Tao. If you would convey one ayah, as the Prophet said, you know, people would know about what Islam really is. They wouldn't have all these weird ideas from certain preacher and pastor who has, you know, a certain agenda, political agenda and so on, and wants the Muslims to, you know, to be kicked out of the country or whatever else, you know, they want to do. If you would do your job, and you might say, but I don't know anything, but I'm telling you that you know, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَد. Everyone knows قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَد. Everyone knows to have ihtiram, good manners, right? As the Prophet ﷺ said, that this is the heaviest thing in the in the scale of deeds, right? The the husnul uh, khuluq, yani good manners, and this is something that uh, yani, that the Prophet ﷺ, he, he promised uh, a house in the highest place of Jannah for someone who has good manners. Why? Because that ma those manners are a dawah. Okay, the people look at you when you look like a Muslim, you act like a Muslim, you you know, relate everything to Islam, people will feel attracted to you. They'll say, how come this person doesn't cheat on his taxes, doesn't cheat here, doesn't do that, he obeys this, do that, he's always, you know, helping. You know, and you say, as Yusuf, السلام, when they said that, uh, that, in, uh, that we see you from the muhsineen, for the right, from the righteous people, those people in jail. And what did he do? They said, yeah, alhamdulillah. No, he said, 
you know, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He related everything to Allah and He gave da'wah. People saw him that he's a muhsin. They came to him and asked him a question. He didn't say, yeah, 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 don't worry. He said, he started telling them about Allah. He said that he has moved away from the religion of polytheism and so on. And he has followed the religion of Ibrahim and Yaqub and the, the righteous people, the prophets. And he asked them, are many lords better than one lord, the true lord, the creator? This is da'wah. This is Dawa 101. And this is what we fail to do. We think that we have to be a mufti or we have to go to, to you know, a Muslim country to study for I don't know how many years to give Dawa. No. You need to just know your limits for Dawa. Some people today have reached that, oh, you should not speak. You don't know anything about Islam. You're not a Dai. You're not this. No one's a Dai. You should do this and this. With all due respect, uh, my dear brother, Okay, the Prophet Sallallahu he told you, convey from me, even if it's, okay, if you want to call it a mubalik, okay, if you don't want to say, if you're not comfortable with da'i, fine, be a mubalik, be someone who conveys the message of Allah. And he, you know, it's the same thing, you're calling people to that message. So if every, again, every single one of you, brothers and sisters, takes the time, to reach out, to do something, at least one person that you convey to, two people, you find that people will understand Islam differently and they will not be scared. People are scared of what they don't know. And people will not react so and so and you know, all these negative reactions. They will know, you know what, Muhammad and Fatima, they're my neighbors, they're this, they're that, they're good people. Okay, we're not going to you know, do anything against them or you're not, we're not going to allow you to do anything. And at the same time, Muslims need to understand and this is a time for you to get right with your Lord. Okay? And sometimes Allah will bring upon you something, a calamity for you to realize that. And when you don't realize that, that's even you know, very, more sad. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to give you the look that no one is going to bring your Islam on the plate. You need to get it properly. And you need to respect yourself and your faith so others will respect you. Okay, they might be your enemies, they might disagree with you. But if you are strong in your stance and you understand your deen and you don't compromise, you know, for every little left and right thing, at least people say, you know, these people are not wishy-washy. Now we're being accused all over the world that we're like flip-flopping, you know, wishy-washy, we're just always lying and this and that. Subhanallah. Why? Because there are some people who are doing that. So we need to be straightforward, simple, good people, righteous, follow Islam correctly, understand Islam properly, understand what's allowed, what's not allowed, when it is allowed, when it's not allowed. And then from there on you find that people will not have an issue with you. And there's always, you know, the exceptions here and there, but this is the life and this is the world and what can you do about it. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to um, help us to understand, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to implement what we, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to understand. And uh, I want to remind you that this is a live show, inshallah, if you want to call and make some comments, inshallah, and participate, uh, the phone lines will open, inshallah, bi'idhnillah, after the break. We're going to take a little break right now. We'll be right back with Brother Ayad, and we'll talk about more about the traps of shaitan. Chance to gain reward, I will spend on you, he says. TV commercials motivate viewers into immediate action and to sway consumer loyalty from one brand or service to the other. That's why we're here for you, to help you sell your products and services by using creative ideas that bring life into your own TV commercial. Advertise your business and branded products and services on Huda TV. We will offer you fast-paced and energetic 30-second affordable TV spots. Advertise on Huda TV, acquire fresh customers and stay within your budget. For more info or to receive a quote, please send your inquiries to Advert at Huda TV. Huda TV. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. قالوا أجئتنا لتأفكنا عن آلهتنا فأتنا بما تعبنا إن كنت من له ملك السماوات والأرض. وإلى الله ترجع الأمور ألما 
رأوه أعظا مستقبل أوديتهم قالوا هذا عارض ممطرنا بل هو ما استعجلتم Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back. Time to please Allah. This is your host, Gabriel Romani, and I am joined by Brother Ayad Hausi. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? Alhamdulillah, feeling better. Alhamdulillah. Allah is fikr. Amen. Thank you for coming today. May Allah accept it. Alhamdulillah. May Allah accept it. Alhamdulillah. And we just spoke about, just touched upon some of the things that are going around the world. Just a few advice I was given to their brothers and sisters. Um, you know, a lot of the du'at are speaking about this. Um, you know, people are asking, can I take my hijab off? I don't want people, can I wear like a hoodie or something? I don't want people to recognize that I'm a Muslim. Uh, what can I do? And so on. So what advice would you give to our brothers and sisters in the West? Now, uh, at the same time, people need to understand that, you know, we're not oblivious and ignorant about what's going on. We are from the West <laughs> to an extent, and we live there, and we've, yeah. you know, so people need to also understand that. So what, what advice do you have? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi, wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsan ila yawm al-deen, amma ba'd. First of all, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give strength to the brothers and sisters who are living in this part of the world yes. where they're facing those kind of, uh, I would say, a calamity, we could mm. put it in that way. Yeah. Like you, if This brings the hadith where the Prophet says, whoever have the iman, and then they are in a place where shaitan are playing with their iman, Allah. where now they don't know what to do. They get double reward, and they are patient. They get double reward as compared to someone who live in aman and istiqrar. Allah. As compared, to, and a mu'min, he's living in security, at peace. He can do whatever he wants. You compare that mu'min to other mu'min who are living in a place where he has to hold his iman for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. He's having a battle between him and Shaitan, and he wins that battle. He's got double reward. Subhan. My advice to the brothers and sisters: Look, we know the situation or the circumstances that are going through yeah. it's not easy yeah. but fard is fard yeah. now it is a time where shaitan will come and play with you mm. it's part of the topic yes, sir. Sir. shaitan will come to you and say listen because طبيعياً, we are muslim yes. we want to live in peace with everyone but sometimes we try to please them because we want to live in peace. We want them to know what is Islam. We want them to, to know that we're still together. And we try to compromise our deen. Yes. We try to compromise our religion to please the human beings. And you might displease Allah Azza wa Jal. Here the question is, can I 
in order to feel safe. Can I do what Allah Azza wa Jal has asked me to do? Can I not do it now in order to feel safe? Whatever Allah has made fard, you stick to it. Your hijab, stick to your hijab. Whatever kind of Muslim attire you used to wear, like say for example, anything that was wajib, keep it. Let's say if you believe going outside wearing a kandora, you might be unsafe. In that case, yeah, because kandora is not wajib. Kandora, the thawb is not wajib, so you can wear a pantano as long as you're wearing something which is halal. Yes. But don't compromise mm. your deen in order to be safe. I mean, you got to understand, Allah says in the Quran, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سَبُولَنَا Who are struggling our way? Mm. We're going to show them their ways. Well, we'll get the, the right path. They're going to be guided. Just be patient. And if ever you feel that you cannot live in that place, then make hijrah. Hmm. Then go to a place where you feel, you can wear your hijab, you can wear your niqab, you can make your five daily prayers, you can keep your beard, you can do whatever you want. Hmm. If you feel you have come to that daraja. So. Yeah, because there are options. Some people but, might say, that's too hard, I cannot do it. You know, if you every think time it's this, too this topic comes, you know, it's controversial. Yeah. Like, ah, I if you think it's too hard, but still, but you got to understand, back... Uh, Some people don't even try. I mean, yes, really. you, got, you got to try. And let me tell you, many of them, and you might, know, you might know better, many of them do understand why you're wearing a hijab. They will respect you for that. No. And a minority might not understand. So don't let this minority control you. Yes. This is shaitan again. Shaitan will make you think, that, look, I need to merge into the society. So I need to be with them. I need to play cards with them in order for them to think that we are lenient. Right. You know, we're not extreme. We're not extreme. No, no, no. Mm. Don't sell your akhirah for the dunya. Yes. You wear your hijab, you fear Allah Azza wa Jal. Know that whatever, whatever you're living now, it is temporary. No. And it is a test from Allah Azza wa Jal. Big test. Their reward are more than our reward over here. I want to make a point here about, you know, I don't want to really get into it, but I think it's a very wise point. I, I believe it was uh, Shaykh Al-Thaymin who was saying, was asked about, you know, well, it's hard for people to move to a Muslim country because of visas and all this. It's not like you can just go. Yeah. He was saying, but okay, fine. He's like, that's, that's a valid point. He said, even moving from a neighborhood where you're having issues to another neighborhood where it's more Muslim, is more safe, that also can be considered like, you know, right? Like, and it's not like a hijab, but it, yeah. it is, yani, in a sense, you know. Right? He said, even then, because, okay, you cannot move to Muslim country. There is visa, blah, 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 all these things, yeah. fine. But you move from the area where you're affected, you know, there's, as we know, in many of the Western parts, there's Muslim concentrated areas where people are more safe there, you know, with their own and so on. Yeah. There, it's, you know, people are dressed up even like, you know, very yeah. Islamic. Well, you feel more safe. UK and so on. So even, you know, moving from that place and within the country yeah. yeah within the country and you're moving from a less safe place to a safer place where you can actually there's a masjid maybe you can practice religion freely there's more muslims it, they're the majority so no one's going to be like saying something or oh, why you dress like that or why you know so that's you know that's something very wise i believe yes. that the sheikh said and subhanallah you know definitely <coughs> and uh, I, I believe that uh people uh if this is happening now yeah now people really want to know what is Al-Islam. Hmm. So like how you said in the beginning, no. If you know any of your colleague, now whenever they look at you, People they're having a know. different picture yeah. now. They're having a different picture. Wait, wait a minute. This guy, he he's has always been good to me. And we're hearing bad stuff about his religion. So he might not come and approach you. You go and approach him. Sir. You go and approach him and tell him, brother, I know what's there in your mind. You've got you saying all these news and everything. Let me clarify those misconceptions. Yes, yes. Let me just do that. Just do it. They're ready to listen. Let me tell you. Of course, they want to listen. They're they want, they to want listen. an explanation. Yeah. But they're sometimes scared or shy to ask. They or, don't you know. want to ask. Yeah. <clears throat> but this is the opportunity for people, you know, to you know just take an extra step and be like, hey, buddy, by the way, what you see on TV or this or that. Let, let's let's you know. Let me explain to you. Very good. It's very something. true. And if ever, if ever, Subhanallah, and what we've heard and what we witnessed as well, after many in incidents of what happened, people want to know about Al-Islam. Yeah. 
They want to know who who is that man Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They want to know what is Al Islam. Why does the word Quran or Al Quran being mentioned in the news? Why people are so fussed about Al Islam? So let's read about it. So once they open the Surah Fatiha, they will want to read because it's better than reading the Quran. Mu'jiza. The Quran is a miracle in itself. Once they start reading, they want to read and read and read. And all the questions are going to be answered in the Quran. Mm. Benefit. Or you can just take a Quran and give it to someone. Give it to someone, yeah. Translation the Quran, yes. Translation the Quran, take it and read any some, question. I'm sure ask. you've seen that some of the brothers were debating whether they should give a, a Quran as a gift. You saw it maybe posted on the, on the group. No. Uh, there was an email of the brothers list that they were saying like you know should I give there's a person who's going back to the USA yeah. so they're debating whether they should give the Quran or not mm -hmm. you know? and I said you know I guess the concern was that whether they're going to respect it or throw it I said listen just give it a translation translation of the Quran okay, it's not what they do with it after that you know it's not you know any, it's yeah it's just a translation it's not the Arabic it's not the original you're just giving a translation my experience with all the people I've given to, no one has ever said, ah, or something like that. They've always took it, and they, you know, they were happy, and you know, said, that's great. I had one person saying, I pre they were so happy, like, I appreciate, I was looking, I wanted to have one, I'm going to put it next to my Bible, and say like that. Like, you know, so, I mean, I you know, sometimes our own pre, you know, it's guns, they, you know, they stop it, us from yeah, getting down. Yeah. Like, we also look at people like, you know, oh, come on, the same way they sometimes look at us, we look at them, you know, like, ah, this person's gonna, this, not, people are not that bad, yeah, yeah to be it's honest. True. Yeah, it's they true. are, I'm sure they are those guys with burn the Quran and, you know, those, Man, no, you know, If ever people. they do, you will not be responsible. Yeah. And if ever, look, when we go back, <clears throat> at the time of the Prophet, <laughs> when he sent the messages, yes, he sent the some of the messengers, Yes. With, some with, ayat with the ayat Quran. of the Quran, no. And two of them tore it. Yes. yes. Among them were the king of Persia. Yes. And then some of them, they just read it and they kept it. And some of them are still available till today. Some of them, time. and then what they did, some of them, they were happy, but they didn't accept it. Yes. They even sent gift to the Prophet yeah. Muhammad yeah. Yeah. So he did it. Yes. He sent it to them. And this brings us something. So at the time of the Prophet them, there was the rule the Persia, and there was about, uh, the, the part of Africa where, you know, where uh, uh, Abyssinia yeah. was. And in middle of them, there was Mecca. Right. So Mecca, at that time, that was the places where they hated Islam the most. Yes. Right. Now let's think. That was the places where they hated Islam right. the, the most. most yes. Prophet Muhammad yes. sent some yes. of the Sahaba to Abyssinia. Yes. Go to find peace and then you can make your ibadah properly they came back and sent them again and then they came back so at that time there was the Rome, the Persia the, there was the, uh, the, uh, in that country so Mecca was in the middle the people would think that the last place where Islam would be would be yeah, Mecca <laughs> so now let's put it nowadays yes no. do not despair uh -huh. at the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal question if ever, now, we're getting to know what's happening in those countries where they really, really hate Islam. No. Same thing, this Mecca, how? How they are now, Mecca was like that, back in the days. And then what happened later on? Mecca became the capital of Islam. Who would think at that time, Bilal would climb on, on the Kaaba and give the Adhan, and all the 365 ideas would be thrown out? Who would think at that time? No one. <laughs> so, today when we think of what's happening, and those people, they're getting to know Islam day by day, more and more and more, let me tell you, there could be something, we said everything is khair. Hmm. You can never know that in those countries, the adhan will be given loudly today or tomorrow. Allah knows best. Because Allah. they're getting to know about Al Islam. Yes. Yes. Even maybe the Prime Minister or the President never knew about Islam. So yes. now they want to know. So let them read. Yes. You can never know. So do not dis despair. So don't think that we've got no place to go. Yes. Yeah. Be patient. Mm. Be patient. This place is temporary. Muslim at the t in Mecca, when Abu Jahl was in charge, they were going through more persecution than 
what you're doing. Whatever what's happening to you, brother and sister in the West, it's nothing compared to what happened to Sumayya and Mar Yasir. Yeah, hmm. Back in the day, being tortured, punished, Bilal radiallahu an. Just because he used to say, La ilaha illallah. Huh. These are not happening to you, brother and sisters yes. back there. Hmm. So, you're not being tortured, you're not being punished. Just make your five daily prayers. Have talk on Allah subhanahu Have your tawakkul upon Allah azza wa jal. Yeah. And do not let shaitan play with you. And this is, the, this is where again, do not let that. shaitan play with you. Let me tell you something. Let's get back in it. Shaitan, Allah Azza wa Jal, when he said, لا تتبعوا خطوات الشيطان. No. He didn't say لا تتبعوا الشيطان. No. It's difficult for you to follow shaitan straight away. But shaitan is so clever that he comes with khutwa, hmm. step by step. But you have to have knowledge for you to know what are the steps of shaitan. There are many things. Like for example, <coughs> if we relate that to what's happening nowadays. Okay, let me, this is happening. I've been bullied now. Let me remove my hijab. Yeah. First step. <sighs> slowly, slowly. Salat al-Dhuhr, you want to go pray. You find everybody looking at you up and down. Uh, He's going gonna... to prayer. Yeah. So, let me just make only four, I can come back quickly. Yeah. Later on, you find out that their hatred are growing towards you. Uh -huh. You don't even go for, for the fard. That's it. Slowly, slowly, you leave the salah. Slowly, slowly, you leave your deen. Change your name. You might even, oh, they don't want, <laughs> I don't want it to call Muhammad, call me Mo. Mo, Mike. Or Mike, and stuff like that. No, you have to be proud, you're a Muslim. Allah Akbar. You had to be proud you're a Muslim. And you're the brother of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he told the Sahabi, the mm. Sahaba at that time, you are my companions. Mm. And my brothers are those who are going to come after me and they've never seen me. Allah. We had to be believe. proud. Allah. But unfortunately, shaitan plays. This is called trap of shaitan. Slowly, slowly. Slowly, slowly. slowly. He's very patient, subhanAllah. Slowly. <laughs> it's weird. He's got patient. Yes. <laughs> shaitan got patient. And uh, Ajib. And this is how, because Shepan knows your level of Iman you've got. Yes. First of all, he will want you to do, to commit shirk mm. and kufr. This is his ultimate goal. Yes, number one. So he believed now, uh, he cannot make Abdullah fall into kufr. Right away, yeah. Yeah. So, Allah said, yeah. Now, Shaitan come to Abdullah and then he make the worship, he make him try to add some stuff in the worship. Hmm. Make him fall into bid'ah. Make bid'ah. Bid'ah bid is, even the ulama says bid'ah, innovation is worse than committing sin. Yes. Because when you make bid'ah, you believe you're on the right path. Yes, well, when you're committing sin, today tomorrow you're going to make tawbah for so, that sin. So. But Shaitan is more happy when you do bid'ah as compared to when you commit sins. Yeah. So, if you still believe that he cannot get you to do bid'ah, he will try to make you believe that sunnah is only something that if you do it, mm. you're being rewarded, and if you don't do it, you will not be punished. Uh. Thought of the words of shaitan, how they come to you. Yeah. In another ways, sometimes one of his steps is to make you do good deeds, Look at that. Make you do a good deed in order for you not to do a better deed. For example, how many people nowadays between Adhan and Iqamah, you see them reading the Quran. Hmm. So. But at that time, a better deed to do is to make dua. Allah Akbar. Al -dua and al la yurad. Allah. It is not rejected. So Shaytan didn't want you to make dua at this time. So how? Read Quran. <laughs> this is this is mentioned. Allah Akbar. He will make you read the Quran Allah. in order for you not to make dua because he knows if you make dua you're going to ask for Jannah. Allah. You're going to ask Allah to have to, oh Allah make me go away from Shaitan. He knows you're going to do this. So read the Quran. Allah. Abdullah read the Quran. Look at that. So this those are the Tilbis Iblis. Those are the way of of him attacking the the the, the, the Muslim. Mm -hmm. And even now after that, he will make some some permissible act. He make you fall into permissible act. For example, let's 
Ayyab and Jibreel, they go and sit in the desert. They speak for like five, six hours. Mm -hmm. It's permissible for you to go, but he had removed you away from Ibadah. From the Allah Azza wa Jal. This is one of his trap, one of his step of getting you away. Mm -hmm. Until later on, he had actually made you fall into some kind of sin where you yourself you haven't known. Sure. When you have fallen into sin, he will try to make you do those sin again and again and again where it has come something normal for you. Adi. <laughs> Adi. Subhanallah. You know, one of the story, this happened before, one of the men called Barsiyasa. Yes, I think we, wa we wanted to actually mention this story. Look how uh, shaitan. Last show. Let's Look see. at this. So you yourself, you can tell me how shaitan attacked him. Hmm. So we make that long story short. Barsiyasa was a good, was a abid, zahid. He was like, not just a normal worshiper, he was, he was the worshiper. One of the best worshiper, yes. one of the most feared yes. servant of Allah Azza wa Jal yes. in that village. Yes. So two brothers, they had to go on a long journey, hmm. on a very long journey, and they had a sister. So they were discussing, those two brothers, where do we keep our sister? Hmm. They were like, there's no one in the village who fears Allah the most except Barsisa. So now let, what do we do is, let's go and keep our sister with Barsisa and he will take care of our sister. He will not touch our sister. Mm. So they went to Barsisa. In the beginning, he refused. Mm. No, I can't. A woman? No, 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 no. no. I can't keep a woman. Mm. Shaytan will come and attack us. So Shaytan came in him and said, if ever you don't keep that sister, she might go into someone else's hand. And what may happen? So the brothers were returning with the sister and they said, Listen, bring your sister over. Mm -hmm. So he had a temple where he would, uh, we could say, a masjid, where he would worship Allah Azza wa Jal. And then behind that, he had the empty room. He said, Okay, I'm going to keep your mm -hmm. uh, sister over there. Mm -hmm. So it started. And then. So he was, the sister was in charge of Barsisa, so he would cook and send the food, keep the food outside, for example, and then she would come outside and take the food. And then he was thinking, well, wait a minute, now there is no point. Hmm. She's going to come out, people are going to see her. Yeah. So what do, do I do? Let me open the door and put the food Just inside. Put the food inside. Look at the khutwa shaitan. Later on, he opened the door and he would put the, the food inside. Hmm. He would do that for, for a while. And then, he, w he was thinking, so that lady got no one to talk to. Mm. So let me, I don't want to go inside, inside the room, so let's talk from outside. Mm. So she's inside and I'm, and Barsisa was outside, so they would talk. And then he was thinking, look, that's looking really bit odd. I don't think it's, it's all right. So let me just go inside and we talk. And Shaitan got him inside the room with the lady, with right. the girl. And the shaitan attacked them, and the lady became pregnant. Wow. Very long journey the two brothers went. Look what happened. Shaitan got him to do zina, zina, adultery, number one. And then she became pregnant. She delivered the boy, baby boy. So now shaitan came back to him and told him, Rasulullah, now a boy has come, they're going to ask, where did you get this? So you had to kill the boy. Kill the boy. He killed the boy. Murder. Number one, zina. Number two, murder. murder. <coughs> then, Shaitan came and said, you think that lady going to keep quiet? Hmm. She's not going to keep quiet. Then, she killed the lady as well. He killed the lady. Double murder. Two murders. Huh? Zina, murder and murder. Love. So what happened? He buried the lady and the baby, same place. Khalas. The brothers came back to Barsisa. Barsisa, we are back with our sister. Barsisa said she was ill. She became ill and she passed away. There is her qabr. Zina, 
murder another murder lie. and a lie oh look at the step and a lie lie so they were like okay well see so you're a pious person we believe you they felt sad they went back home and they went back home Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make them to dream both of them dream both of them dream. one of them dreamt and said he dreamt that the one the qabr that he showed us that our sister is not there it's another qabr mm. so when he woke up in the morning he told the other brother listen I've got a dream a little bit weird tell me he said I've seen such and such thing in my dream the other brother said I've seen the same thing mm. the qabr of our sister is somewhere else so they went they dug the qabr they threw the sister and the baby they found out what happened Allah. they took Barasisa they wanted Barasisa this is what happened so now they had to take Barasisa to where? to get executed to the king now everybody can see now look what happened to Barasisa why they were trailing him to bring him before everyone shaitan appeared in front of him hmm. and told him you want to get out of this mess I can take you out of this mess Finish now. Committed zina, murder, another murder, he lied. Shaitan came in front of him and told him, no, you want me to remove you out of this mess? Then do one sajda for me. And guess what? Because he was, you know, when people are stressed out, That's in it. depression, they want to do whatever they want just to get out of it. Pressure. Pressure. And he did a sajda. And after what Shaitan said, Thank you very much. See you later. I got what I wanted. <laughs> Look at that. How he made Barasisa made sajda in front of him. Allah. Allah. From the best to the worst. Exactly. Yeah. And I remember the ayah you mentioned last time. Yeah. Don't blame me, but blame yourself. Blame yourself. Because even on the day of judgment. When the thing will be done, when the hisab will be done, the judgment will be done, Shaitan will say, now, he will say, Inni bari hmm. I'm innocent. Inni akhafullah, he says. Inni akhafullah, <laughs> and he even says this. <laughs> and he even would say, I used to tell you to do a thing, but you used to obey me. Yeah. And now i got nothing to do with you. فَلَا تَنُمُونِ وَنُمُ أَنفُسَكُمْ this is the way of shaitan. So if we know that shaitan on the day of judgment, he's going to, he's khiyan or khain. He's someone who betrays. And because he just wants you, who wants to come, because that's his promise we said in the last episode. His promise is to take you to Jahannam. No. So we should not, in order for us to know about how we should avoid the trap of shaitan, there are many things that we need to know. Number one is the afkar. Mm. Before going to the house, read the dua, shaitan will run away. Shaitan will say there's no food for us, no drink for us today. When we leave the house, we, leave, we read the dua, no. shaitan will say, how can we have power <coughs> over someone whom Allah has protected? Fine. When we eat, bismillah, shaitan run away. When we eat, we eat with the right hand. Mm. Because whoever reads with, uh, with the left hand, Shaitan eats with them. When we sleep, we read Ayatul Kursi. Mm. Allah will send an angel next to our head to protect us. Allah. I mean, making the adhkar. And if we relate it to nowadays, especially to the university students, mm. the Prophet وسلم, said, Iltazim al jama'ah, fa inna shaytan ma'al fadh. Allah Akbar. Wa ba'id al ithnain. And stay with the people. Stay with the jama'ah. Ah. Jama and don't be alone. Even in the house alone, shaitan will come and alone attack you. Sheep. No doubt. And don't be alone with another sister. SubhanAllah. Don't let shaitan play with you. Say, I just want to go and make some da'wah with the sister. Mm. No, no, no. Don't let shaitan come and do this kind of thought with you. Allah Good da'wah, then you're going to fall in love with the sister. Yeah. We're going to take a short break, inshallah. We'll be uh, right back talking about how to defend ourselves uh, against your time with Nila on a time to peace, Allah. A chance to gain reward I will spend on you, he says Google TV is pleased
to announce the launching of its first mobile phone application on all iOS and Android based devices. Browse your phone store for our new app under the name of Huda TV. Huda app delivers a bunch of amazing and versatile services to our fans and viewers worldwide. You can watch our live streaming on the move, surf our large archive of categorized articles, benefit from our daily supplications, Askar, that every Muslim should recite throughout the day. Just tap on any item of the Askar list and it will take you to the specific supplication it indicates to. Need to know the broadcast time of your favorite program? Just click to broadcast schedule for specific details. Huda app allows users to browse the gems of Huda TV website where they can enjoy our telemedia services by watching thousands of video clips, plenty of audio clips featuring invocations, nasheeds and audio themes of our favorite programs. Go back to the index page and check upon what is going on at Huda TV by visiting ever updated Huda news. Get to know the profiles of Huda stars and never forget to tap on our behind the scenes button for exploring our backstage activities. It's also worthy to check up on Huda's pages on social media websites and enjoy our awesome posts and sharing. Download Huda TV's app now and live our world of authentic Islamically themed educational knowledge. Huda TV brings light to every smartphone. Allah, Allah, so let me stray, please come away. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk on your favorite channel, Huda TV. I'm your host, Arkham Rashid. They actually did uh, such and such that you're accusing him of in your mind. Uh, so now I want to start off with my right hand side, uh, Brother Ahmed. If you can just tell us what your thoughts were on that video, what can you extract from that video? Would you say some of the youth uh, turn to drugs, especially you know in your country, if if they don't have jobs or you know it's because they want to get away from their daily normal lives? Would you say that's okay, a reason? Absolutely, that that's true. Some that's people just resort to drug as the last option because they they get themselves straight out and uh, instead of depression, but they don't know where to turn for help. Sports per se is like a, a communal social activity where mm -hmm. it, you know, it collects the community together and it, it bonds brotherhoods together, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a very social in this aspect where you interact with you know, your teammates or your players in a team. So I think um, a message would be just to stay completely away. away from it. Even we can say, oh look, it's haram. Welcome back. Assalamu alaikum. Time to please Allah. Live from Dubai. We're in our last uh, seven minutes. We spoke about the traps of shaitan. It was a continuation of the previous program. And we talked about the story of Barsisa, which is just an amazing story. I think that, that story like it always hits me, you know. Eh? And there's, it's just like hearing it for the first time. So let us uh, get back to, okay, so we, we, we know how shaitan works, kind of, you know. We know that there's a lot of things in... He's very patient and he has a lot of, you know, khutuwat. Yeah, he takes yeah, step by step by step, by step, step to get you to do qafar in the end. Yes. Okay. Type, how, we, how do we protect ourselves? You said the athkar are very important. And this is a very easy way to protect yourself. Definitely. Shaitan, by the time, in order, look at that. In order for shaitan to attack you tomorrow morning, he starts doing his job before you go to bed. Taqtid, mm. he has proper plan. The Prophet said, before you go to bed, Shaitan, he has three knots. Look at that, at the back of your head. Mm. So if you woke him up in the morning, you mention the name of Allah Azza wa Jalla, you make your wudu, you make your salah, those three knots are undone, and then you wake up healthy, you know, you're fit. But if ever you haven't done any dhikr, or you've woken up, your salah, or wudu, so Shaitan start to control you as from the beginning of, the, of your day. Yes. Khalas, he's got you now. So we've got back to uh, to being 
uh, to being alone with uh, with uh, with, a, with a sister or in any kind of form, I would say, please be very very careful. Mm. This is one of the ways that Shaytan attack how he attack Barsisa. Yeah. So definitely, you shouldn't be alone anyway. You should not. You should not. And always, you will find yourself whenever you are alone with a sister. Uh, Shaytan will make your conversation look good to her and her conversation and look good to yeah, you. Yeah. This yeah. is it. Mm. This is how it is. Yeah. So these are the ways that we should not. Let it be a khutwati shaytan. Don't even follow the step of shaytan. All the steps of, of shaytan. And one of the things as well is very, very important when it comes to dua. You make dua. We know Allah is Samir. Allah listens to everyone. Muslim and non-Muslim. And he answers the dua to whomever he wills, whenever he wills. Mm. So there are some people whose dua are delayed. Why they are waiting for the dua to be accepted, shaitan come and play with them. Oh, okay. And he make you say, I made dua and I made dua Nothing and happened. Allah has not accepted Allah. my dua. Oh, okay. This is very common. Allah. Very common. We should always know that Allah Azza wa Jal, He created you and He created Jannah for you. Allah. Allah didn't create Jahannam for you, put this in your mind. He created Jannah for you and He wants good for you. <laughs> so He wants good. Allah knows when to accept your dua and when the best time and where to accept it. So, la tasta'ajin. Hmm. Don't be in haste. فَإِنَ الْعَجَلَ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ Keep on hastening in everything, it is from shaytan. So you want your dua to be accepted straight away? It, is, it does not work like this. Make dua and be patient. Make dua and be patient. Allah Azza wa is going to, to accept you, your dua. And even, we had to know that shaitan, he wants to get through your heart. He cannot just enter, penetrate your heart. He will enter your heart through your eyesight. Allah. By making you looking into haram, may Allah protect us. Yeah. He will enter your heart through your ears. By making us listening to haram, may Allah protect us. He will make you and he will enter your heart through your mouth mm. by you uttering bad words, backbiting, raising your voice above your parents and your teachers, and lying, mm. lying, lying. This is something that even the Prophet, the thing that he detested the most, the thing that he hated the most was lie. Whoever lie, you can never trust them. Whoever lie or fabricate any kind of things to get away with something, you cannot trust them. And we are teachers, we know. <laughs> we see that on a daily basis. Yes. They lie. Who make them lie? Shaytan. Shaytan make them lie. So we should always, always be mindful of Allah Azza wa Jal. And whenever we feel that we are falling into our any kind of trap of Shaytan, let's renew our Iman. Let's renew. How do we renew our Iman? I keep on saying La ilaha illallah and make dua. Right. Make dua. Allah, Allahumma ya muqallib al qulub thabbit qalbi ala dinik. Even the Prophet used to say yeah, this. Ya muqallib al qulub thabbit qalbi ala dinik. Ya musarraf al qulub sarraf qalbi ala ta'atik. Look, this we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the people Ameen. who are being protected Ameen. by Allah Azza wa Jal from Shaytan. And we ask Allah to accept what we've done. And make us among the people of Jannah in the night. Amen, Ya Rabbi. Jazakum Allah khair. Brother Ayaz, may Allah bless you and may Allah protect you, all, all the viewers, and bless all the Muslims, uh, the brothers and sisters who are facing difficulties uh, back uh, in you know, Western countries where there is pressure on them. Be strong, do not follow uh, the uh, steps of Shaitan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing your faith, man. Allah is testing your faith succeed inshallah and if you want to succeed Allah will help you succeed but you need to want to don't take any little thing as an excuse you know it's it's true. True. now you know I can just you know because you don't know you know this is not the ruqsa in this yes. case you know so be careful inshallah ask Allah to help you keep your prayers straight you know be, be proud be a Muslim do good to people you find that they will also respect you and they will protect you Jazakumullah khair inshallah we'll see you in the next episode a time to please Allah live on Huda TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Gabriel Roman, your host. A chance to gain reward I will spend on you, he says.
All on who stand in good cause Good deeds are opportunities Sparkling bright and true Raising you in the sight of Allah And adorning a Jannah for you So rush to earn his reward Don't forget the